Hi guys, it's April Lee, Chronically Me. I wanted to talk about um, ME-CFS, um, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome, and um, another long word that I always butcher, um, myalgic encephala, encephalomyitis, probably said it wrong, chronic, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome. So um, my husband asked me a question and he was serious and I didn't know the answer. He said to me, what exactly scientifically is making you so depleted of energy and so exhausted? Like what, what is happening in your body that is causing that? And honestly, um, I don't have the answer. I have been going to doctors for almost five straight years to oversee, treat the best they can, um, a combination of fibromyalgia, long COVID, and um, chronic fatigue syndrome, and no one has one answer. So I'm gonna read to you, because um, I wanna talk about the stages of this and what stage I was at and where I'm at now and how it can fluctuate and change. And it also uh, might correlate to the spoon theory that I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about. So symptoms of ME-CFS, it says, common symptoms include feeling extremely tired all, all of the time, you may find it very hard to do daily activities, still feeling tired after resting and sleeping, um, taking a long time to recover after physical activity, and I'm also gonna add after mental activity, just conversations or um, thinking about anything or doing a task like um, on a computer or um, reading or anything like that too. Problems sleeping, um, and problems waking up during the night and getting to sleep and staying asleep, problems with thinking, memory, and concentration. Some people with ME-CFS also have other symptoms, including muscle or joint pain, headaches, sore throat, flu-like symptoms that come and go, feeling dizzy or sick, fast or irregular heartbeats, also known as heart palpitations. Um, the severity of symptoms can vary from day to day or even within a day I will add minutes to hours to weeks to months to years. Um, I have every single symptom on here um, in addition to any other symptom you've ever seen listed. Um, the severity of the symptoms do change for me. It says the symptoms of ME-CFS are similar to symptoms of other illnesses. So it is very important to see a general practitioner, which would just be a primary care doctor, um, to get a correct diagnosis. I would also add definitely a specialist, someone who specializes in this. Um, if, if you have even like a few of these symptoms and you don't feel um, like your normal self and you feel like there is a chance you could have this, I highly recommend you get to a doctor. Um, I had symptoms of fibromyalgia coming and going and I was seeking care and nobody, nobody knew what was going on. So I would just go for random symptoms for about nine years. Then I suddenly had chronic symptoms for a year, starting out with neurological and um, neurological in the sense of like feelings. So nerve pain and numbing and tingling pins and needles, um, brain fog, weird sensations throughout my body, um, having like a really hard time sleeping, extreme exhaustion. And then after that, all the pain came. So. It was like a good six months of symptoms that were really bad before I sought care. And then it was like a year and a half of endless doctors, um, specialists, hospital visits, um, all kinds of scans and testing and everything for a straight year and a half and literally basically demanding that I get answers. And that led me to my diagnosis of all together at one time. Um, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, central sensitization, and um, they also said that I had generalized anxiety. And the thing with the anxiety is that, of course, I had a normal amount of, like, I would call a healthy anxiety that kept me motivated and, like, you know, a healthy amount. But then when I had all these symptoms and nobody knew what was wrong with me, I had, like, a very high level of medical, what I call medical anxiety. Um, so those were my symptoms and they got worse and worse and worse. What would have been a dream 
is for them to diagnose me correctly, which they did, then um, help me, you know, find a medicine that would work for me. So what they did is they diagnosed me with what I had and said, go to your primary. I'm going to recommend they put you on Cymbalta and then you're just going to be fine. And that was not the case. They really didn't explain to me what fibromyalgia was. They just said all of your symptoms are fibromyalgia and go see your primary care. So it was very difficult to like absorb that and realize, oh, I have fibromyalgia. Like, I don't know, the word sounds pretty. It doesn't sound that bad. And you know, I don't really know what it is, but I think I'll be just fine. And I went to my primary care. I said what she said to say. And of course he said, you have these options of medicines and Cymbalta was one of them and prescribed that to me. And I took it and um, unfortunately for me, it does work for some people. It didn't do anything. And it, in fact, it made all my symptoms a lot worse. And I took it for five months, then increased it to think like, oh, maybe that's gonna help and it made it worse. So. Um, what's helped me the most by, by far is low dose naltrexone, um, LDN. Um, it took me from severe, so I'm going to talk about stages in a minute. So severe where I had a hard time getting out of bed, um, and I would get out of bed in agonizing pain and extreme fatigue. And it would, it would take me like about 10 minutes to like get up and then like sit up and like move and enough where I could like breathe through it and say, okay, I can handle standing. And then I would get up and it would take me like a very long time to get from my kitchen. I mean, my, my bed to the bathroom. So what would normally take me like five minutes to hop up, go to the bathroom, wash my face, brush my teeth, get ready and leave the room took me like 30 minutes. And I had to push myself to do it and I was exhausted by the time I left the room. And then I would go to the kitchen to try to get my kids ready and it was, everything I did was like. And I'd have to like breathe through that and then I would move the cup and then I'd have to rest. And then I would, you know, rinse the cup and I'd have to sit down and I mean insane amount of um no energy okay and so nobody taught me how to deal with that they just said okay I'm going to give you some Balta it's going to help you mentally and then it'll help with the pain and then that's it and so I really needed a plan I needed a way to learn how to not only slow down, but reserve energy and somehow like restore energy. So I was told that because I was so severe at the time, it was gonna take me six months to a year to kind of like recover from that, to get to a more level, um, I guess like a level amount of energy for having these conditions. And it was pretty accurate, um, but I didn't understand what to do. So what I did is I just slept and rested when I felt that way. And then as soon as, like that would last for two straight weeks and then I would have some energy and then I would get up and everything I couldn't do for two weeks, I did. And then I would crash and I would be out for five days. And then I would, I just kept doing it. And in my head, I'm like, why do I keep, why do I keep crashing? Why does this keep happening to me? And I did not understand that nobody explained to me that basically my body, and I don't know the scientific reason. I don't understand why my body was no longer creating the amount of battery, the amount of energy, the amount of um, effectiveness that it did, it no longer did that. So it basically gave me, when I was at my worst, the most severe, it gave me probably 10% of a charge. And then I would have to like spend days recovering to get back to that. So I'm gonna explain to you the levels um, and see where you're at. Um, okay, let me go down here. Oh shoot, hold on, let me see if it's on this because I did, I pulled it up, but, um, okay. Um, okay, here we go. Severity of symptoms. Okay, it says one in four people have severe. All right, so I went from severe to what I would call moderate slash severe. And then there's very severe, which, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry if that's where you are, but know that there is hope. I have um, heard of people and know of people that have gone from very severe years, a very severe to now actually working 
and living and staying at a mild to moderate pace somehow um, with, you know, therapy and medication and resting and pacing and spoon theory and like working real hard to stay there. Um, now our body chemistry is, you know, we are all different. And so um, we cannot all be, you know, at the same level, no matter what we're doing. So this is just someone that I know personally. Um, they were very severe, like bed bound, could barely hold down food, um, could barely get from the bathroom to the shower. And I was like that as well. But see, mine happened where I was like that for like a week or two. I could like get up enough to drive my kids to school and then I'd have to sleep the whole time they were there. And then I could get up and do little things alongside many symptoms migraines, light sensitivity, um, sensitivity to everything. I mean, it was insane. Um, and then I went to severe. And then I went actually for a couple of months after starting LDN, I went from a very severe to severe to actually very mild for a very short period of time. That was literally heaven to me. It, I thought I was cured. I really did. I didn't have to pace. I didn't even know what that was. I was doing good. And then I got COVID and it's been three years and I've never been the same. I got COVID. I was sick for about three weeks, got through it and never, never went back to mild or like barely had it, right? I've been backtracking and really trying to get to um, what would be considered a consistent mild, but right now I'm at like a moderate, um, a low, I would consider a low, um, level of moderate with like tons of effort and work, tons. Before it was just LDN, a great diet, good sleep and exercise. And I was mild to barely noticeable for a few months. So here I am. All right. Mild. You're able to carry out everyday activities such as work, um, studies like school, housework, but with difficulty. Um, and it says you may need to give up hobbies, social activities so you can rest in your spare time. So let's say mild would be, it, it doesn't say how much working, right? So you could, I used to work before I got any of this, I was working 35 hours a week, then I was working 30, then 25, then 20, then 15, then now I'm at 10. And I'm using a bunch of tools as you watch my videos on top of medication, supplements, resting, lots of prayer therapy and medication. Um, just to stay at a level of let's not get to severe again, right? So um, let's say mild to you. Mild could be many things. Mild could be you're able to carry out daily activities. Let's say that you're able to, I don't know, do a little laundry, Make yourself some breakfast, do a w walk around the block, take a shower, read a book, maybe do a little work on the computer or a job or something, and then maybe cook some dinner. And the next day, you don't feel like you did 10 times that. Okay, that would be mild. Moderate. You may have difficulty moving around easily and problems carrying out daily activities. You may not be able to work or continue with your education, like focusing or just the, the mental ability that it takes to the energy and the thought process, right? Um, and it says you may need to rest often and you may also have problems sleeping at night. That's me. I have, I am struggling to work. I'm doing it, but it's very difficult. It is uh, leaving me basically um, out for the count. Um, very minimal ability to do much the days after. Um, and thinking and focusing are very difficult. That's why most of my videos, I make them before 11 o'clock in the afternoon. If I do a um, interview with someone, like I'm getting their story, I try to do it by 11 and make sure that I've prepared in every way before. So I'm mentally clear um, because once I get physically tired, I no longer can um, put my thoughts together and focus to do anything that's like worthwhile, basically. Um, severe. You may only be able to do very basic tasks, tasks such as brushing your teeth um, or take, taking a bath maybe, maybe, or even getting dressed. Um, you may be housebound or bedbound and need a wheelchair to get around. You may also have difficulty concentrating 
Um, you may be sensitive to noise, light, and sound, and take time to recover ac after activities involving extra effort, such as leaving the house or talking for long periods. Man, um, reading this is such, it really like is a rude awakening. Um, for me personally, um, I am moderate severe, um, depending on what I do and don't do. If I do not pace, if I do not use this new spoon theory I'm doing, if I do not um, plan out accordingly, do everything just right, get the good amount of sleep, eat the right foods, limit the stress, barely work, I am severe and then I will stay there. And then, and this is what was happening, then I became very severe. And that's why I was having a difficult time doing anything and functioning um, at a consistent pace because I was pushing through the severe and ended up at very severe. So very severe. You may spend all of your time in bed resting and fully dependent on other people to help you. You may need help eating, washing, and going to the toilet. You may be extremely sensitive to light and noise. You may be unable to swallow and need a feeding tube. I mean, this is crazy. So, um, number one, I just want to say to you that if you deal with chronic fatigue syndrome, I, I am so sorry. And my heart goes out to you. Um, I know that it is one of the most difficult things for someone to explain to someone else what that is, what this is, especially someone like me, right? I'm, I'm at a moderate, a combination of moderate severe. And until I hit the full severe and my husband can see that, um, he forgets. And sometimes, obviously I always know I'm having a problem, but I forget and I'm like, I used to get so mad at myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm stuck on the couch or now I can't do anything for four days. Um, and so I'm really sorry, you know, and if you've healed from this, I'm so happy for you. I, I mean, I know that you probably feel so free and if you're still in this and thinking like you may never get from very severe to severe to moderate to mild, I don't know what will happen for you but i can tell you from my own experience that i have seen people i personally know go from very severe to actually getting their um, medical degree and working i don't know what their lifestyle is i don't know <coughs> how they're coping and managing i don't know what they did to get there but i know that they did recover and they have you know a, maybe a, a small relapse here and there but um they're living their life in a way that they probably never saw coming. So I know that hope is there. Um, as far as myself, I'm at a moderate severe and my goal would be to um, stop working and um, like in my physical career and to be able to um, make a plan with my spoons, plan out everything accordingly have my body have time to regulate into a normal routine to then take my spoons and my energy that I would do working and actually do exercises and more of the physical like rehabilitation type things that I should be doing at home that I have the energy, I have to take that energy and use it to you know, pay my bills. Obviously, I, I know a lot of us have to do that if we're able and I'm working barely anything, but that is where my time is allotted. So I know that if I can take that time and put it into the work that I, I can do, I could see myself at um, mild, a consistent mild, maybe better than that, but a goal would be consistent mild where you're able to carry out daily activities. Um, not me, it would not be working. It would be my housework. It would be my computer work and videos and, um, being, um, there for my children, um, the spiritual, um, guidance for them and emotional support for them and taking them where they need to go and like doing the chores and the things that, um, I can handle on my own so that I don't have to burden my husband with those things and um, just having more of a steady flow rather than um, moderate 
to severe, moderate to severe, moderate to severe, which will eventually just, it's gonna crash my body. So um, yeah, so those are the severities of this. Um, I don't know where you're at. If you wanna share in the comments um, your story or your journey or what your goals are, um, feel free to do that. Um, LDN, um, if you have not heard of it, um, has been life-changing. So I've gone through phases where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop all my medicines and I'm gonna power through mentally and mind over matter and um, I can do this. Well, I got off the LDN first and within five days, I was in so much extra pain and so many extra symptoms. So I know for a, for a fact that the LDN is what has kept me from being um, really truly severe to severe, to, from severe to very severe consistently and kept my head above water um, along with physical therapy. I did physical therapy, pelvic floor therapy, um, trigger point injections um, for pain and muscle injections, migraine injections, um, B12 shots for deficiency there, prescription vitamin D a few times a year, magnesium and supplements and turmeric and vitamins and lots of water and very low chemical eating the best I can. Uh, gluten free and dairy free and um, organic as, as possible, minimal coffee, lots of rest, um, therapy, uh, daily time with my savior, um, a positive attitude. Um, I don't know what else I'm missing. Making sure I'm active as I can be when I'm able to do it. Uh, pacing, the spoon theory. Um, guys, like it is a lot of work. Like if, if, and I, sometimes I think, wow, I'll just stop all my medicine and stop all this and just think like I'm good and get up and go. There's no way, like, I can't believe the amount of things that I have to do to be where I'm at, but you know what? I'm grateful that I can do them, but I swear, I do wish that if, if you got these things and they don't have all the answers for you, they at least were like, here's the spoon theory and let's work on energy management and whatever. Like these things are so crucial. And these are the things that actually keep me from being constantly in bed, um, you know, and, and being able to like manage and cope and stuff. So um, know that you are not alone. Know that there are many levels of of chronic fatigue syndrome, not even not even adding in. You've got the fibromyalgia factor, which I have, and um, gut issues and stuff like that. And um, if you followed me, you know that I've done literally everything. All the, I mean, I'm so tired of explaining what I've done. All I can tell you is that I've done everything you've ever heard of, everything, um, every single thing. And, um, yeah, I don't do what you call meditating, but honestly, I don't understand besides just there's different forms of meditating, meditating. I get quiet and I'll do my breathing exercises and I will, um, talk to the Lord. And then if anything, I'm just quiet and waiting to hear his voice. Um, that's the only meditating I do. Um, cause that's just what I feel like is important for me and that's what I do there but yeah these are the severities I have no scientific explanation I'm sure there's some explanations for certain things but all I can think of is that because I also have mast cell activation syndrome so I've got um, things at a cellular level things at a um, neurological level muscular level and chemical level with um, things as well that I think just so many things going on is making my body just work so hard to just exist. So it would make sense that I would wear out easily. So um, if you are new to my channel, um, I cover a lot of things. I 
a lot of things. Um, gut issues of all kinds, um, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, um, his, like histamine issues, um, hormonal things, um, probably forgot to tell you chronic migraines, I don't even know if I said that. Um, endometriosis I used to have, I've had surgeries, I've had a hysterectomy, um, and then um, there's something I'm missing. I don't know what, but I cover a lot of things like physical tools and medications and supplements and um, how to navigate like the medical system and stuff. If you are new to any of this stuff, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, but um, I would love to support you and your journey if you feel like you've just been um, told you have this and you're searching the internet feeling like you're crazy and this is all in your mind or you know these people are nuts what is that like you're not alone and that is why i'm here because i i was so alone i was so confused i had a family to raise i had a husband and a business that i've had for 20 years and i had all these conditions and i'm like all i want to do is be able to drive my kid to dance and i want to cook my family dinner and i want to be able to breathe without hyperventilating because i'm so physically tired and i want to get through a day without being in consistent pain and i've been able to get to um this moderate area of illness with a lot of work and i would love um, to help you too. And um, number one, I, I would suggest above anything is um, do not just use the internet as your advice. Definitely get yourself with a good um, primary care if you don't have one. Um, look into a specialist for whatever you have going on. You need somebody in a specialty. You don't want just a the doctor that does everything. You want the, your main doctor, but you need people on your side. You need them to be there to not only diagnose or to help you understand the diagnosis, but also to find the right treatments for you, um, help you get the things you need. Um, they may need to write prescriptions. They may need to refer you to someone. They may know someone. They may have resources for you. Um, it's very important. So if you're newly diagnosed and you're scared, know that um, you're not alone. There are so many people with the things that we have and um, there is life to live and there are people that actually get better and improve. There are people like me that have to work really, really, really hard to stay at the level I'm at. And there's people who are bed bound for a long while and we all find our way. We all, um, find a way to deal with it and cope. Some of us are so mentally strong and can just handle it all without any help. And you've got someone like me who needs medication to help um, cope with the situation not going away. And I need therapy to talk it out, to help me like accept it. It's been almost, it's like five years and I'm just finally where I can truly say without any doubt and, and no, no, uh, I'm not lying that I could say like, okay, I'm tired and I'm, I'm going to accept that this may be it with holding on to the hope that yes, maybe it will not be this way. But right now it's, I'm okay if this is it. Um, because the only reason I was okay for all this time is because in the back of my head, I was going to find the cure and the source and the cause and get rid of it. And I literally have spent four years full steam ahead digging and digging and digging and researching and fighting and kicking and screaming, trying to stop it and it's not gone. But I went from extremely very severe to before COVID mild to now three years into this with an additional issue, which is the mast cell activation which has kept me at moderate to severe. But like I said, when I stop working, I know that I'll get to moderate to mild. I just know I will. I know my body and I know what it can handle and I know I'll get better. And I know that I'll start to work out and actually have some definition in my muscles and like 
you know, feel good about myself because movement is so important if you can do it for your heart and your organs and everything else. So anyway, if you're new here, please click and subscribe and share and join me on my journey and let me support you and yours. God bless you and bye.